One of the greatest things about our country, beyond the freedoms that we have, is that every child is able to have a free and appropriate public education. In Oklahoma, we value every child, and we want to see every child achieve their highest potential. There are no throwaway children. family and I moved to the United States five years ago because in Burma the government was not stable. We couldn't do anything about what they said or what they did, so we just have to deal with it. In Burma, Christianity is not a big religion. Because of that, my parents want to find a place where we could worship freely and like have a freedom to you know worship God like, as much as we want. When I got here, I didn't know any English, so it's really hard for me to like have community and communicate with others. When I first get here, I get really frustrated when I go to school because I don't know the language, first of all, and I can't talk to other people like the way I talk in Burmese, especially when we read a book. I have no idea what is in the book. I have no idea what is going on, and it's really frustrating. Sometimes I don't even want to go to school because I don't understand the language. I don't know what the teacher is talking about. When Ching first got to the United States, she was very shy and smiled a lot, very happy, but her confidence and her ability to express herself in English were extremely limited. ELL is English Language Learner. The program is all about like those people who move to the United States that not knowing English, not knowing how to speak, not knowing how to read. The teacher literally help us like how to speak, how to like read, read learn, Listen. Over the years that I've had her in my class and now that she has graduated from the English Language Learner Program, it's wonderful to see the way that she has taken new students under her wing and helped them acclimate and become more part of the Jinx community. The person, it's a person, right? A baker? Yeah. Okay, and what is he doing? I just feel like I'm really lucky to be able to meet people from so many different places and to learn their stories. I imagine that that is a positive impact that a lot of people who meet the students here at Jinx also yes, exactly. feel. I think it's very important for teachers to know when they have an English language learner student in their classroom that that student is just learning a second language. It does not mean that they are not capable of everything else that someone is learning in school or that it's not a reflection of their intellect or their capability. It just means that they're learning a second language. Now that I know English, like I know how to speak, I know how to read, I know how to write. It might not be perfect for me, it might not be perfect for other people, it might be hard to understand for other people, but I really feel comfortable because of the ELO program. Every child deserves to have a wonderful education. And what I see in some of the programs that are being offered, many of these types of initiatives really breathe life into what students are able to dream for themselves. One particularly that one of my children participated in was a time where they could come and volunteer in a class with students that had very severe, profound, and multiple handicaps. It was life-changing for my daughter. Every day, these kids surprise me. I look at what they go through on a day-to-day -day basis, and they come in with a smile. They're always happy. You know, and some of them just have a hard time walking from the bus down to the classroom, but they're happy to be here. We 
go from very mild, specific learning disabilities, which would be like you have a normal IQ or a typical IQ, and then you have one area that you're not performing as well in, like reading or math. And then we range all the way to intellectually disabled, which would be what used to be considered middle or retarded. So their IQ is longer, their adaptive behaviors are lower. And so it's a very large range. Students are in concept classes. They're with me most of the day, except for when they go to work and they go to adaptive PE. We take it down to a level that they're going to be able to interact. We can watch things and we have activities that they can manipulate things. Physical education, it helps them learn better even, just to have that activity in PE. They're with the typically developing kids, and that's really exciting for them because they're not with those typical kids all the time, and so it's a nice break for them to really get to know someone else. Throw it harder, overhand. You can do it. Good job. That was a good one. We have a great program. We have peer tutors in here every hour that they usually work alongside with the students. They, they love it when the peer tutors help them because they become friends with them. They see them out in the hallway, they'll say hi. Basically I'm paired with a partner and my partner's name is Sonia and so basically I just get to hang out with her for our period of PE and so I get to include her in all of the activities that we do, whether it be playing basketball or throwing tennis balls today and just being her friend and building a relationship with her. I actually had a little sister with special needs who passed away when she was four, so I have always had a huge passion to be a part of kids who have special needs in certain aspects of their life. A lot of them participate in Special Olympics with them. Peer tutors learn that this population, that, you know, how sweet and nice they are and that they can, you know, become your friend and how there are different students and how different students learn and that everybody is a part of the school. It's been really incredible. I am really excited to be her friend now. She told me the other day that she considered me one of her best friends, and she's one of mine. Being able to be her friend has given her a great foundation to being open to try new things and have great friends and just be a part of the school, even with a disability. Special education itself is really important because each child deserves to learn and we are just individualizing it to the way that they learn. What I think is important is letting them know that there is a place in the community for them. When you get to know them, they really enrich your lives. And I think it's important for us to have programs like this, just so everybody knows that they are special and they, they touch your heart. I could have taken normal classes and that would have been fine, but I wanted to push myself so I would have a better understanding of math. Instead of just dealing with how to learn a certain question for a test, I'm learning what I need to use this in real life and in understanding why it works that way. The correct solution for variation of parameters, you need to put it in standard form. So there is a two out in front of the Y double prime. You will need to divide by two. It just helps understand the world around you, which I think is a good thing that most people should know. Like, when I'm driving my car, I've learned about like velocity, acceleration, and how those relate to each other. That's really applicable to any moving object. So it really just helps you understand the world around you. When I was taking my Spanish final, I was really, really sick the whole week, right? I didn't come to school the entire week of finals, and then I came in the last two days, because obviously, you know, it's finals, I have to do it. And so, I get there on Thursday, and my Spanish teacher's like, all right, Nick, it's time to take the final. And she sets me down next to one of those cabinets, one of those tall cabinets, and I swear the whole time, triangle, little triangle monsters were coming out of it, because I was hallucinating. They're, like, nibbling on my paper. I got 100 on the Spanish final, thank God. But, you know, obviously, math permeates into my hallucinations. Most of the kids that we have are extremely sharp and extremely capable of learning the concepts, but it does challenge them and stretch them to think in a different way. 
Right. Did you consider the same Y1 and Y2? We had the two? same Ron ski and we had the same Y1 and Y2. The, the difference is Josh, Josh, Josh pulled out his twos in the integral and I left them in. And I'm not sure if there's anything else that's different. <laughs> I mean, we do a pretty good job here of presenting it in a, in a multifaceted way and, and trying to strike on everything as far as visual and analytical and just numbers and stuff in general, but it ends up stretching them in much more complex ways. After high school, I plan to major in engineering, which is something that I don't think I would, like, I don't think I would have come to the realization that I'm an engineer had I not gone through the college level math classes at James. I'm really into mission trips and mission work, and so I would really love to um, work for a mission company and do the graphic design for that. And there's so much math involved in graphic design, you know, just spacing and, you know, making everything fit just right and angles and all that kind of stuff. And if I did work for a mission company, then I could possibly do just business side of that and all their bills and that kind of thing also. I don't know the word for it, but it just I guess it gives me more confidence in knowing that I can reach my full potential here if I so choose to. Like, if I wanted to stay in Algebra 2 right now, then I could if I just wanted to pass by. Here's what we got though. We got this right here. When I took AP Calc BC, I learned so much in there and it helped me to understand Calc 3 better and so just the availability has just helped me to grow so much in my understanding with math. So for me, it stretches me every single day and it stretches the students in return and not only do I get to impart a little bit of wisdom but they end up creating questions and having questions that that makes me dig a little bit deeper and, and that's all part of the process as well not only educating kids in just mathematical areas but also saying you know what let's dig a little bit deeper and let's become a little bit more of a lifetime learner and that's why I like teaching them is they, they end up stretching me to be that every single day Pre-Med is just like an organization at Jinks that brings in all of these medical opportunities that are just purely educational for like the kids who like are just interested in any sort of medical profession and it ranges from like dentistry to like physical therapy or just any sort of like division of medicine. Metacarpals, metacarpals, and yeah. then your fingers or your phalanges. Oh, okay. So this part is that... The carpals. That's your wrist. Oh, okay. And that's why your wrist can do this, because those slide against each other and they pivot around and they do all kinds of weird things that, that these can't do. When I was in high school, a junior in high school, I took an anatomy and physiology class that really made me feel like I needed to be a doctor one day because it was, it was so cool to see how mechanisms on a cellular level affect big things and affect people. And I really like being around people, so I, I chose to be a doctor. What about your patient? The biggest focus for pre-med is to explain to students that there are a lot of other careers in the health field, not just doctor and nurse, they always think that. And so to give kids already interested opportunities to explore that, to learn more about it, and maybe students that don't know anything about the medical field to give them some insight into what it might be like. That's my tendon, I'm not going to strike that. But then the way that this muscle contracts is the fibers run like this. I have kind of always had in the back of my mind as far as I can remember that I wanted to be a physician. I think on my third grade paper I wrote that I wanted to be a pediatrician. Being in the pre-med club kind of immerses you in the medical field, specifically within community medicine. And I made an effort during high school to really be involved in the pre-med club. At Jinx I was an officer and that led me to opportunities like volunteering at hospitals and being involved in programs in Tulsa like Medical Explorers. But probably the biggest thing that we really did was we held a school-wide blood drive working with the Oklahoma Blood Institute and we had a great turnout and so I think it's something that has happened every year since then and that kind of solidified it for me that I decided that I wanted to be in a career where you're helping people but still also enriching your mind and continually learning. Are you allergic to iodine?
like if you're probably interested in pre-med, you're not gonna be like squeamish about taking blood and like messing with it. I really enjoyed the blood drive because I'm just really interested in like medicine in general. And so I thought it was really fun to like help them out and see how they worked. And I didn't realize how important it was. The Red Cross workers said like one bag that they take can like save like three people and it saves like seven babies. It's just interesting bringing in people who've had the experience in the profession or in the education for this profession. My name is Lisa Yang and I'm the president of Premier Society. I always wanted to be a doctor since I was a baby and so when I became sophomore, um, upperclassmen told me about pre-med, so I decided to join pre-med. As a doctor, you need to focus on one thing, and you need to focus on your patient, and you need to focus on your work. And a medical field and music seems a little distant, but I feel like playing music helps you to focus, and it helps you to prepare for medical school and become a doctor. Beyond the coursework that we all know is vitally important for a deep foundation as a mother of four kids, I also appreciate the importance of team sports, of things like music programs, band, film coursework, or debate and work that is done in math competitions or academic bowls. We can offer so much more than just what we think of as the basics of math and English and, and reading and science. Not one thing is greater than another. It's about balance and having well-rounded interests and then, of course, that strong foundation. I thought our family ate pretty good, and compared to what I hear other people eat, I thought we ate pretty good. And then about two, three weeks ago, Rachel at dinner said, look at this plate, it's all brown and brown and white. Miss Cole says we have to eat the rainbow. And we all said, Skittles? <laughs> and she said, no, Miss Cole always teaches us that we have to have all the colors on our plate, and that's how we know we're getting a healthy meal. Ever since then, I've been buying a lot more fruits and vegetables and the girls are eating more fruit, and when they get a craving for something sweet, they'll go grab some oranges or an apple. Miss Cole's class is really awesome because I get to learn to cook and do things like that. Oh, okay. okay, so you don't cook them first. You put no. them in there and let them saute. It is yeah. foods and nutrition. So we do a little bit of food and we do a little bit of nutrition. It's a family and consumer sciences class. And all of our classes are hands-on and they're life skills. It's very basic, simple things that will make your life easier if you know how to do it. This is like my dream class when I was little. Like my daughter, she's gonna go on from this class and be able to cook things in college and she's not gonna have to have ramen noodles. <laughs> or every single night anyway. I don't always hear from the students right at first, but I do sometimes hear from parents that the kids are listening and it does matter to them and they are taking it home and they are trying it out. So that's nice, that's nice to hear. She also said it grows bacteria and you shouldn't wash fruit before you put it in the fridge. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. My kids have always made their lunches in the morning, and Rachel now goes through in the morning, and I watch her, and she has her little baggie of green stuff and her little baggie of orange stuff and then some fruit, and there's not all the cookies and junk food. It's rubbed off on her little sister, too. I see her taking in those healthy snacks. Well, and of course, I'm eating healthier, too, because there's better food around the house, so she's been a leader in our house that way to help bring healthy food to the table. A lot of my friends go to private school and their classes are mainly like core classes and maybe they have a few electives that they can do or clubs but I really like Jinx because they have a ton of extra things that you can do like food prep. I have three students that have gone on and studied to become a fax teacher 
and one of them is now teaching food prep and nutrition at Broken Arrow. Another one has another year to go, but she's been very involved in college. So that makes us proud that they've gone on, that they've seen the value in the classes, and so they've gone on to pursue it. I also have students that have gone on to study nutrition. One of them went on to study nutrition and then got into med school afterwards. You can go di all different directions. We do talk about different careers that you can do that involve the food industry, but it doesn't always have to be. It can be sports medicine. Just learning about nutrition and how to be healthy it can be used in so many different fields. I personally like AVID because it's helped me improve as a student, as a student athlete, and also it has shaped me into who I am today. There's not really just one type of AVID student. Really the key is, do you have that individual determination to work through whatever obstacles you might have to make that college dream come true? Yeah, I don't understand the bottom part. Oh, I can like fit it on there. Oh, okay, I see. If you're a student that has a, a big dream, a big goal of wanting to go to college, and you might need some assistance in getting there, then AVID could be a good program for you. So there's huge benefits. We have students that have graduated from college now, some of them are the first in their family to graduate from college. We have students that have had access to incredible amounts of scholarship opportunities. The derivative of the position function, you get velocity. I took AVID because I met Miss Temple my junior year in high school, and she talked to me about really realizing my true potential. And after speaking with her about not knowing what to do after high school and not knowing where to go, she suggested that I join AVID considering that it was a college prep class and it kind of prepped you for what comes after high school. WICKER stands for Writing, Inquiry, Collaboration, Organization, and Reading. That is the basic tenets of AVID. When we're working with WICKER strategies, it's a compilation of all the best practices. My study life was pretty bad, like didn't really pay attention to anything and that, of course, when I got into AVID changed with all the different techniques and stuff that they made sure that we implemented into our study life. So you go all the way down and then you just plot that point. The tutorials really helped me. Every Tuesday and Thursday we had to bring three questions that we were really struggling with and it made sure that I was actually doing work and I was actually studying somewhat so that way I had questions to bring. And the questions couldn't be easy questions like what is the square root or something like that. It had to be a level three question which is a pretty hard question that the team and the rest of your tutorial group were supposed to help you get to that answer. Do you think gender is going to change the outcome of like a the biggest thing for me with AVID was that I learned how to apply for scholarships and get to college because I was the first one in my family to do it. And that really takes the biggest scare of going to college is I don't know how to get there. My sister plays sports and so we knew that with her playing sports she was going to need some help on figuring out how to get to college with sports and how to balance her grades and her sports. And We felt like that would be the biggest help for her to be able to join AVID. She's very successful and she was like, I think that you should do it. So I was like, okay, sure, why not? You're successful, so why shouldn't I? In AVID, we take a lot of notes. We are required to take five notes by the end of the week. We have tutorials every Tuesday and Friday, which we have to bring a question about any of our subjects, mostly the ones that we're struggling with. We present them to the class. We explain what we're confused about and we talk about it. By talking about it and bringing a tutorial, it expands our thinking and by people asking us questions during tutorials, it helps us answer it in a way that we can understand it and answer it later. Oh, no, you get the right answer. Okay. The classroom atmosphere of AVID is very family oriented and the kids end up really bonding in a way that they don't get a chance to in their other courses. I didn't really know a whole lot of people when I came to Jinx. I transferred into Jinx my sophomore year in high school. And after being in one classroom with the same set of people every day for almost two years, it just kind of turned into a family. Not everyone fights alone. 
We all fight together and we all need to help one another. By doing the canned food drive, it, it shows that we really do care about the community and everyone not being alone. I feel that if you're working with a group, you get more stuff done than in the sense if you were working alone. There was a big group that went to the food bank and we were split into groups of five or six and we were given individual projects like sorting cans and putting cans of food onto the shelves. We have kids that come to Jinx that need help in everyday lives situations. I've learned the responsibility of looking out for other people when your life is doing well and that someone else might not be doing well and reaching out to people that need help. T, if you divide both of these by 12 or by 3. Kiko benefits our school in a lot of ways. We have the Freshman Academy tutoring, high school tutoring. Tutoring is always a lot of fun. I feel like it's one of the most direct ways that we can impact the students at our own school. There's always a lot of students that are in need of help and they you know, can't afford to hire professional tutors. They don't really need to because they only have a few questions every now and then, but they definitely need their questions answered by you know, another student who gets it and who they're more comfortable with than say an adult or a teacher. I was part of NHS and so our part just was helping make the school look better. I think the purpose is extremely important because it makes the school more inviting to those coming in and it gives a more positive feel to the school and how it functions. You really need that to make the school seem like a great place to learn. It really is a great way to come together as a group and work together for a goal. Tighten a knot, and then you're going to cut the ends of it, and it's a ball. I'm Elena McGuire, the president of Jinx FCCLA, and we're making yarn balls for the infants to about three years old, and we're doing it because they can't throw the you know real balls because it would hurt them. So this is kind of a safe alternative for them to play with. Our organization really focuses on the family, and as a part of that, we really like to give back to our community. And so today is just one of the ways we can do that. <laughs> I'm really grateful to public school for exposing my children to many children, not just children that are just like them or children that have the same advantage or opportunity or even skill sets. It's a time where we show respect and value and appreciate that every child has something to contribute to one another.